Welcome back to episode 241 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here with the one, the only, the lovely, Baba mm. Louie. And sometimes nice to me, Phil. <laughs> I do love him, though, even though he's not nice to me every time. Hi, Phil. <laughs> Hello. Oh, How's it going? That was, that, was a little, that, that was a little baby heart. I don't know how to do the... I don't know how to do that either. I don't know. I'm Lou's trying. got a daughter. Well, yeah, you should know too, Josh. <laughs> I have a daughter too. <laughs> yeah. Phil, it snowed today in Minnesota. Well, that's not fair. Why'd you you get snow before we do? That seems so. We're we always forget we're north of you. Yeah, I know it's weird. <laughs> it is, it is, it is north. Not by much. Are you north of Toronto in Ottawa? Yes. We're in, Ottawa's got very bizarre uh weather because we're in a valley. So we get oh, really? humidity. Oh my goodness. Like it, we we could have 10 degrees worse humidity than Toronto in on the yeah. same day. Yeah. <laughs> There's some good logic for you. It sort of felt like winter was never going to come here and it made it kind of real today, huh, Louis? Real quick. Yeah. Did you guys have a big winter last year? Because we had like three no. snowfalls. No, none. Yeah, nothing. And then last year I didn't plow. The first year I don't plow in like 15 years. <laughs> My buddies went out like three, four times. Unbelievable. Anyway. Why well, we're just aged ourselves by talking about <laughs> the weather and complaining about the weather for three minutes. So I guess we'll move on. <laughs> totally. I also <laughs> turn down the music when I think in the truck now. So. Do you need to pause and go out the front door and scream at kids? Get off my lawn, you... No, I already did that. That was on Halloween. Okay, you did? Really? Yeah, of (laughs) course. Get off my lawn! (laughs) Rude. Rude. Well, Phil, we're two days away from the major debut of the show The Whole World's Talking About, Friday Nights with Phil. Yeah. Which premieres on the Hockey Cards Gong Show YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This Friday, November twenty second. So, yeah, how are you feeling, Phil? You uh, you excited? I'm super excited. I I there a theme will develop. I I have a sure. loose structure. Uh, sure. I I did. I'll be honest to the good listener. I kind of wanted to do this in January, and Josh was like, "Nah, you're fine. You can do it now." <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, I'm kind of busy." He's like, "Nah, nah, nah. You're fine. Just do it." So, so yeah, just throw me into the fire. I have uh, I have over fifty packages of mail. I have to open and I have over 500 com C cards. Uh, so, you know, if you want to hang out with me and do that, that's great. I will. I'm going to rifle through my com C packages pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So I, it's not going to be a Friday night mail days with Phil always. I just thought that sure. would be a nice, comfortable way for me to ease into it. And uh, I, so I do need people to know I have not looked at one card I bought at the expo. Or my Com C or any of my mail days. Obviously, they're in the packages. I, I everything you're gonna see Friday night is the first time I saw the card, except the cards that Josh and Louie made me show for my weekly pickups, which would be three of them. <laughs> you you still made me. This is, you this made is like hockey Sorry. card communism here that we make <laughs> you do everything. <laughs> communism looks great on paper, but we all know it doesn't work ever. So uh yeah, so Friday is gonna be great. I'm very excited to finally look at my cards. And I would love you to join with me. Um, Louie and Josh are going to help me the, on Friday and the next Friday. But on the third Friday, I'm going to be on my own. And I'll have my own friends, maybe not friends. Maybe I'll have some enemies on there. And we'll Ooh. see how that'll go. But I want it to be interactive. I want people to get ready with their collections, call in. I want you guys to flex your PCs. And I want to be the platform that you can do it on. So get a good webcam. That's the first step. I will not put up with potato stuff. I just, I will not. I will not because you can show me all, you can show me your 52 mantle. And if you're on dial up, see, ya. I'm hanging up on you. Do you think there's any other hockey collector in the world that has roughly 600 cards that they've purchased recently, which is crazy in of itself, <laughs> but that hasn't even looked at them? No, I'm, definitely yeah. alone on that island. Yeah. <laughs> Do we I need to... like to do an intervention, Phil, or no. do you need rehab? What's going intervention on here? for what? Good discipline? Are you kidding me? Well, that might not be true. My Who's discipline from... could <laughs> hold on. Bad discipline with purchases. Excellent yes. discipline with with playing with your toys. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I have no idea. Man. Well, Friday nights of Phil. I I think it's going to be a lot of fun and. Who knows? It's either good or if you like car crashes like Louie and I, we can come gawk with <laughs> us and we'll, you know, watch you go down in flames. That's fine. I'll, I'll have fun if I go down in flames. It'll be great. You won't. You <laughs> won't. Oh, no, I won't. I'll be great. You're you're amazing. Thanks, buddy. All right. Can't wait for it. 
really quick on the Rip Party winner's update. Phil still has a lot of packages of cards in Canada. And of course, Canada Post is still striking. So we're going to wait probably another few days, maybe a week, and then we'll reassess. Hoping not, not to not have to bite the bullet and like pay through the nose yeah. for shipping and alternative sources. But if we have to do that, we have to do that. Because, of course, we want you to get your cards if you won as soon as possible. Uh, that's very important to us. What day did and the strike you? start? Friday. Well, for last Friday. Oh, okay. That's said we give it two weeks, three weeks. But I don't want to start mailing at Christmas time either. You know? Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So yeah. we're, we're just, I just want everyone to know that it's very much top of mind and we're talking about it a lot. Last thing before we get started today is a reminder that our show, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast, is a Patreon podcast. You can support us for as little as $5 a month. Be one of our first 299 supporters. Forever have that title. 199 sold out. It's done. Fini. Fini. Right? It's very easy to support us. You can go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com. Click on the Become a Patron link at the top of the page. Go to the Patreon website, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. There's a link in the show description in both the podcast apps and YouTube and then our Instagram and TikTok profile. When you choose to support us, you also get access to the Gong Show Discord server, a uh, little bit insider participation in our show. We do different challenges and contests there, like our 5K challenge and fantasy hockey, stuff like that. All right. Since our last show, we've got a couple of new supporters. Very, very grateful there. You're ready for that, Louis. So we have Miles, $24 sign. Miles. Miles. Yes, I said right. Mills. Did I say Mills? Miles. You said Sorry, Mills. Mills. You said oh, it. Sorry. I, th- I, I could be wrong. I think that's Miles. No, M-Y-L-S. I'll tell you exactly what's going on. <laughs> I When the dollar signs, is that a Canadian thing, putting the dollar after? Like, I see some people in Bill message us with like 300, then a dollar sign at the end. What does um, that mean? People know. do that. I'm not miles sure, 24 right? it's miles 24 cash money oh miles 24 cash money there we go i don't know <laughs> and then ct flyers fan 79 thank you very much for your support of our show and then of course still phil and... what <laughs> oh yeah no that's good. stop <laughs> taking my 20 bucks man yeah. it's, it's like what three dollars to american cancel. i told you that you have to so we're gonna I, thank you for every show that you decide not to do that so ridiculous do, do you want to know something me. crazy i there, i have a guy every month every month i have a, a guy scamming my credit card for like eight to fifteen dollars and he pretends he's uber i called the credit card company and asked them you know to fix the problem i'm not very good with yeah. i only have one credit card uh, and they said oh we'll just cancel your credit card and we'll mail you a new one which means i have to like re-input the new number to everything i already have yeah so yeah. i said no i said it's 2024 and that's the only solution you have I made that phone call like two and a half years ago. <laughs> I, I, I have been paying. I have been paying every month just to deal with it. He, he never bills me more than like 14, 15 bucks. It's always eight to 15. He's scamming me. Oh, yeah, there he you go, does buddy. just enough to make it not worth going through the effort. Right? Maybe that's his whole thing, but it expires next month. So sorry, I, I, I sent you on your trips and that's it. That's all the free rides. over. So you're saying I have a month. Yeah. 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 Oh, thanks. Well, Louis. Phil, <laughs> thank you very much for supporting the show that, Technically, you work super hard on, mm. and you shouldn't uh, pay to. But uh, yeah, as long as until you cancel, we're, we're gonna. I'll take make sure it. I we'll cancel take after. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Louis. Yeah, you ready for the gameplay? Sure am. Let's go. On today's episode, we will start off with get to know your hall, get to know your hall of famers, and if I'm not mistaken, are we last one or one more after this? This is the last one for the 1945 class, and then we'll move. That's what I, yes, that's what I meant. Perfect. And then we're going to get into timing the OV market, followed by hobby news. Then we will bring back the hobby over underrated poll. We'll jump into new product releases. Then we go into the Fanatics Collect weekly hockey preview. And then more personal pickups. Okay, get to know your Hall of Famer. So we're at the, as we just mentioned, the very last player in the 1945 inaugural Hall of Fame class for Get to Know Your Hall of Famers. It's a guy we actually profiled a few months ago, or for a few minutes in May during our Memorial Day show. That's in film Memorial Day, like that's when here in the U.S. we honor the fallen who have protected yeah. us, thanking them for their love and their loved ones for their service and sacrifice. 
we call that Remembrance Day in Canada. Okay. Okay. Is that anime or two? An anime? What? No, end of May. Sorry. <laughs> oh, end of May. No, February. February is your Remembrance Day. Mm, yes. Oh, and then as long as we're on the topics of honoring service, can you explain the whole poppies thing to maybe Americans that don't get it? The poppies? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, th did I say February? It's actually November. I believe it's the 11th. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just got home, man. Like ten minutes before we went <laughs> on, man. I'm, I'm thinking hedges and bushes, and so Remembrance Day is November 11th. It is not okay. February. I was thinking Valentine's Day or something, which coincides with our Veterans Day. I would, yes, that's what uh, 100. percent So <laughs> okay. Canada liberated Holland, yeah, and so therefore every year we have in Ottawa called the Tulip Festival. And then, um, I, okay, that's not poppy oriented, but it's similar. And uh, the Holland sends us a bunch of tulips. And then the poppies, we have a bunch of soldiers um, buried in Flanders fields. And that's where I believe the, the poppies, the correlation are. I've been in London in November. And I think it's at the, oh, where, where is it? Where, what's the, at the London Bridge? The, okay. Uh, no, no, the the Tower of London. I'm sorry. Is that they have all the poppies planted in the ground around there, like thousands of them, and okay. everyone in London wears poppies on their coats and shirts too. Yeah, no poppies are sort of tie into England there, right? I'm I'm not good on that. I I, I know. So World War One, that's where the poppies definitely uh, come yep. from. It's like you know supporting like our armed our armed forces, right? And yeah, it's it's very important here in Canada. The poppy, like it represents a lot of men and women i mean mostly men that sure. died they died for us to express ourselves in whatever way we want so it's i like wearing a poppy because it um it's a pledge it's a pledge of my honor and respect to fallen soldiers and that i would assume your memorial day is like that I, i'm sorry i don't know more about the specific poppy significance sure. um you know but i i do know what it represents and there's there's um it's just very important and that's where don cherry got in a little bit of trouble because he was trying oh. to talk about the poppy the red poppy and uh it's a flander i believe it's called the flanders poppy and from flanders fields and it's from um uh world war one like i said and, and yeah. don cherry was really trying to show that it's important to show respect for that i i'm i'm a son of two immigrants so i'm canadian but my parents aren't but they're you know they they my father made it very clear to respect and love and honor the place that he he came to because the place he came from was not even close to this so yes the poppy means a lot to me and it should mean a lot to everybody uh that is canadian in canada i think it's really cool and i actually when we were in canada for toronto i sh wanted to get one i felt like well if i'm an american is that a little like should i shouldn't die but, but here's what i like about it like we have Memorial Day, but that's kind of barbecues. <laughs> that's why it's really oh, yeah? <laughs> around okay. here and sort of the start of summer. I mean, where what I love about whether it's in Canada or England, when you wear the poppies, to me, that's a, a unifying symbol. Okay. In a world where we're so divided. Okay. To have everyone unify around anything. And if you can't unify around soldiers that perished in World War One for all of our freedoms, then there's really probably nothing you can un unify around at that point. Yeah. And so I really appreciate that you guys do that. I think it's cool. I love it. Yeah. It's, 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 it, it's, it's very Canadian. It's just as Canadian as maple syrup to me. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So now getting back to get, to get to know your hall of famers, why this is relevant is the legendary Hobie Baker is the last player in our get to know your hall of famer series from the first hall of fame class now in this series of course we do a quick bio of the hall of famers life career and then cover why as a hockey player or hockey card hobbyist you should care about them and then finally look at their hobby market and of course Hobie baker has a big tie into military service which we'll get in a second or get to in a minute but let's go with the bio so hobart armory hair h-a-r-e Hobie baker lived from 1892 until 1819 Bill, he was born in Pennsylvania, here in America. America. American. <laughs> Hobart was an excellent athlete who excelled in many sports, but particularly football and hockey. 
1910, Baker would enroll at Princeton University. Initially, yeah, initially there, he was a three-sport athlete, baseball, football, and hockey. But the school at the time only allowed a student to play two varsity sports, so he chose to drop baseball. He won three national championships during his time at Princeton, one for football in 1911, and then two in hockey in 1912 and 1913. During the 1911 football season, Baker scored 92 points, which was a school record that lasted until 1974. While our main focus in talking about Baker's hockey, of course, it should be noted that he is also a member of the College Football Hall of Fame as well. Now, we just mentioned Baker won two national championships playing hockey at Princeton. Stats were not recorded at this time in college hockey, but it was estimated that Baker scored over 120 goals and recorded more than 100 assists during his three years playing hockey at Princeton, which they say would average to about three goals, three assists per game, every game he played. Interestingly, while hockey in the early 1900s was, as we've learned, pretty brutal, Baker only recorded one penalty during his college hockey career, which was slashing. He graduated college in 1914 and continued to play hockey afterwards for the St. Nicholas Club, an amateur team in New York City. Baker was offered a contract by the Montreal Canadiens after college, but he turned it down the offer, which was 20000 over a three-year period. Probably a lot of money back in, what, 1914, mm-hmm. 1915? Was that roughly seven sixty five hundred a year, 6600 a year? And they didn't play a lot of games back then. Like a season was 10, 12 games, something like that. <laughs> um, if you really want to know, 20000 U.S. dollars in 1914 equates to $618,237 today. Do divided wow. by 12. Do, what's divided by 12? Jeez the wee like still. 50 what? some grand a month. Yeah. So that's 50 plus K per game. He couldn't do that. <laughs> well, he wanted uh, he yeah, felt 51. Okay. He felt strongly that he wanted to retain his amateur status, and so uh, that's okay. why he turned the offer down. Hmm. Baker would play his final hockey game in March of 1917, which was an all-star game between native Philadelphians and Pittsburghians. I don't know what, what, what you guys call yourself in Philadelphia. <laughs> Pittsburghians. Pittsburghians. <laughs> ah, I'm a Pittsburghian. <laughs> oh, silly. The, the Philadelphia <laughs> all-star team, led by Baker, won 3-2 to two with Hobie scoring all three of his team's goals. That would be his last game because in 1917, he headed to Europe to fight alongside the Allies in World War I as a fighter pilot. During his time at war, he'd have three confirmed kills. And then he was scheduled to return to America in 1918. But before he did, he wanted to take one last flight in France. And they allowed him to test a repaired aircraft. But during the test, the plane's engine failed, causing it to crash. And then unfortunately, took Hobie Baker's life. At oh. just 26 years old. That's horrible. Yeah. Oh, man. Sad. All these Josh, they're all tragic stories, man. I know. Oh, it's kind horrible. of a theme, I think, with this first Hall of Fame class. He was 20. Look at him. Good, handsome man. It's, oh, man. 26. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And that, he's lived more at 26 than 80% of Canadians are living right now. I guarantee sure. you. They lived back then. So why should you care about Hobie Baker? Hobie Baker is widely regarded as the first American hockey star. At a time when hockey was dominated by Canadian players and teams, Hobie became one of the first American-born players to achieve widespread acclaim. His success demonstrated that Americans could excel in the sport, helping spur hockey's growth in the United States. Along those lines, he's the only American player in the inaugural Hall of Fame class of 1945. Wow. He was not just a, an offensively skilled player, but one of the first stars that played a two-way game. His electrifying play style put the still young game of college hockey on the map in the United States. Baker was admired for his adherence to fair play and sportsmanship, embodying the spirit of amateur athletics. He often turned down professional opportunities to preserve the purity of the sport as he saw it. His sportsmanship inspired the creation of the Hobie Baker Memorial Award given annually to the top collegiate hockey player in the United States, emphasizing skill, leadership, and character. 
And then beyond hockey, Hobie Baker was a cultural icon. He was celebrated, a celebrated football player, an aviator in World War One, of course, and then symbolizing the all-around athlete of of his era. He was really a star, yeah, in the United States. And if you read more about him, he went to New York and he was a, paid as a celebrity to go places and kind of be sort of the part of the socialite scene there. He wrote for some newspapers at the time, uh, et cetera. Wow. Now, looking at the Hobie Baker hobby market, there are no playing day cards for Hobie Baker. As again, he reta- remained an amateur hockey player all throughout his career and life. There's a few commemorative cards. In 2009, Sports Kings, uh, Hobie Baker sells for about $10 raw. Uh, you know, it looks like a artistic representation. For a drawing, though, it's actually a really good one. A lot of like, yeah. uh, the leaf art of hockey people need to hire this artist. We'll tell you that. There's also a 1985. Oh, you got something? Lee? No, I was just laughing. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of looks like he just smelled a fart. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Wow. Kind of does. Uh, still not bad, though, for a drawing. In 1985, there's Hockey Hall of Fame commemorative card. A PSA 9 sold for like 70 US in 2023. It looks a lot older there. And then there's a 2004 Upper Deck Young Guns Builder card. The oh. PSA 10 sold for 76 US dollars in November of 2021. There's an exclusives parallel out of 25 and a high gloss out of 10. Now, when we did the pro the little uh, review of his life and career on Memorial Day in the US, I actually went out and bought the exclusives and I think it was like 40 bucks. It blows my mind that wow. one of the most important players in US hockey history, the the guy who's are basically like the Heisman Trophy of hockey is named yeah. after and ha- actually has a Young Guns that there's like no market for it. But I just thought it was a cool card to have. So that does yeah. it. Hobie Baker. Now we're done with the 1945 very first Hall of Fame class. He's he's way more interesting than I thought. That was very <laughs> awesome. And, oh, and I, I do have to say he has three confirmed kills, but in his entire professional <laughs> hockey career, he has one penalty for slashing. That's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've murdered three men, but I don't play violent in hockey. <laughs> well, and, and hockey was a super violent game back then. And if you read yeah. two more about him, he actually made a point after each game to go in the visiting locker room and shake every player's hand. Really? Like that's how he took that very seriously. And like I said, being gentlemanly and playing the game the right way as he saw it what could have been a eh? 26 years old 26 yeah. he died that's crazy the world and very the world fluky too he didn't wasn't right. shot down he was testing a a plane that had been repaired and had convinced them to do it because he wanted one more flight before leaving france to come back to the u.s give hobie a good plane oh, yeah, no kidding it's ridiculous Okay, so next time we're going to move on. There was not a Hall of Fame class in 1946, but they did They did elect nine additional players in 1947, and we'll start working on that list next. Moving along, let's talk some Ovi. Alexander Ooh. Ovi Ovechkin. While there still seems to be very little debate as to whether Ovi will eclipse Gretzky's goals record, Phil, Mm-hmm. Are you going to die on Ovi ain't going to do it <laughs> island all by yourself or no you either? Gonna... Listen, I everyone do you like red apples or green apples? And then you're going to go, I like green apples. I'll be like, oh my God, Josh likes green apples. He's crazy. <laughs> Are you going to die on the green apple hill, Josh? It's not that important. So yeah. I personally still don't think Ovechian's going to do it. So okay. much has to go right. And it's just a very loosey goosey opinion. I'm stop yeah. DMing me hate mail. <laughs> there's so many people who are so if you're if your life is so good that you got to dm me about this ov take i mean uh, share some best practices because i i would love to know uh how how much spare time you have to dm me about this ov thing <laughs> there's certain topics that people get very passionate about this is one this, yeah. this is a big one yeah. yeah yeah i i don't i and i want him to i want sure. him to break the record i just know it's very advantageous right now Mm-hmm. For me, it feels pretty inevitable. Where are you, where do you stand, Louis? <laughs> oh, it's coming! It's coming! Right. It's coming! All right, all right. Well, we gotta do it, Louis. We gotta. Do it. <laughs> that was another Baba Louis hobby hot take. <laughs> Beautiful, Louis. 
Thank you, sir. It's not a surprise to me that the question of timing has come up a bunch over the past week in regards to selling OV cards and maximizing, call it the goals chase value. We do the, or I do the weekly Fanatics Collect show with Jeremy Lee. A lot of times we take a lot of questions from the chat. This was, had come up during that show. I've seen it in other places. It's been messaged to us on Instagram and other places too. So it felt like, well, it's probably a topic that people are thinking about and that we might want to address. Now, none of us, right, unless you guys disagree, we're not big OV collectors. We don't have monster rookie cards that we're looking to move, but I think it's an interesting thought exercise. So we're going to approach this conversation, I guess, as if we did and try to figure out what each of us would do if we were holding a monster OV card that we didn't want to keep forever in our PC and we're looking to sell to maximize its value. And I'm really curious between the three of us to see like where the overlap and differences it will be in our strategies, I guess, as we uh, think about them. Ooh. Now, we got to give a standard disclaimer on any sort of discussion like these. This is not by any means financial <laughs> advice. These are <laughs> opinions. And just like everyone else's opinions, it doesn't mean ours is right. So if you're holding a big OV card and you're trying to figure out what to do, don't take our opinions verbatim. Ooh. What our goal here is maybe to give you something to think about maybe a different perspective that you haven't considered so that you can have the best possible information between us and other sources to make the decision that's right for you. Okay. Before we get hmm. into the conversation, I thought it would be good for us to do like a status or baseline of kind of where we're at in the whole Gretzky goals chase with Alexander Ovechkin. Ovi currently has 868 career goals, putting him 26 from Ty and Wayne Gretzky and 27 from owning the all time goals record. On the season, Alexander Ovechkin currently has an incredible 15 goals so crazy. and 25 points in 18 games played. Super impressive. I think we'd all agree for a guy that's 39 years old. I mean, that's big time production. And how quiet, how quiet he was in the beginning of the season, too. It was just like, where are you? And now yeah. all of a sudden, oh, hello. He went off. That all being said, very unfortunately, he just got hurt. So in Monday's 6-2 win over the Utah Hockey Club, Jack McBain sort of clipped Ovi's leg, and it looks like probably hurt his knee. I saw, have you guys seen how there's all these like Twitter doctors that look at every injury <laughs> yeah. and do a diagnosis now? So I saw some of those saying MCL. I have no idea. I'm not a Twitter doctor or qualified to interpret one, but he is listed as week to week. I don't know if you guys saw, I haven't had a chance to look in the last few hours. The last report I saw was he was being evaluated today on Wednesday when we're recording for, I guess, a more definitive timeline, but it's not any fun. It's kind of a fluke deal, right? Where another player ran into him, but the injury and recovery link could have a huge impact on if, and when he breaks the record. I think this season, the key, I think yes. a lot of people before the energy or before the injury were starting to talk, well, it's happening this year. And now if he's week to week, I think that's going to put that in doubt. Would you guys so agree? Th this is where, oh. this is the part. This is the thing that I never wish anyone to get injured, but you know, the whole time I'm saying, I don't think he'll do it. There's too much that has to go right for him. This is a perfect example of something that went wrong for him. So Let's say let's let's just uh, play devil's advocate here. Let's say he retires from this injury. Everybody is still going to be like, he would have done it. He would have done it if he didn't get hurt. Yeah, but he didn't. He right. didn't That's do fair. it. That's fair. So I just I want to make that very clear. This injury is exactly what I'm talking about. And if it's not this one, maybe it'll be one after that. Right. Well, let's hope not. Yeah. I hope not. I, too, I, I, and I, I, I get want your point him though. to do it. I thank you. Get your okay. point. Uh, message oh. Phil. He doesn't want him to oh, know. He yeah. He's stupid me. if you like him, and <laughs> he thinks all your cards should be worthless. So, message <laughs> Phil, how you feel? I just hope his age doesn't slow him down. I mean, he's only been out fifty-eight, nine games in his whole career. Yeah. yeah. Low, eh? Wow, that low, Louis. Oof, I didn't yeah. know that. That's crazy. No kidding. Uh, yeah, he's been incredibly durable, but but this yeah. is the type of injury too, though that. I, I don't think his age will help the recovery because that never right. does the older you are, but 
anyone would have gotten injured in this. It didn't. I don't think his age was a factor in the injury. Like Jack McBain ran into his knee. Right. Yeah. I so, agree with you there. It happened. Hockey's a pushy sport. Yeah. It does. Okay, let's take a quick look at the OV hobby market. Some interesting stuff here. So the last sale of Alexander Ovechkin's Young Guns PSA 10, which was from 2005, popped 1,286 with a 34% gem rate, was on November 17th, so a few days ago, for 5,000 US dollars. Holy large. moly. That's mm-hmm. a big one. Eight, yeah. Up 18% in the past two weeks, up 12% in the past three months. Okay, I got a tiny sidebar here for you guys. So while I was looking this up, I wanted to know the most ever paid for his base Young Guns PSA 10. Nice. So you and I, I have that. I want you guys to guess. So Louis, what's your guess? Forty two hundred bucks. Um, well, the last sale was five. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, <laughs> I, I've, I thought ever before this. I don't know. No, what no, I'm, no. Yeah, what, yeah, I, yeah. what I'm thinking in my head was this, maybe this is getting up there to be the highest because of this goals thing. So <laughs> since you said that, fine. Uh, $8,300.50. $8,300. Okay, what do you think, though? I think uh, $6,500. Well, after the worst guess in the history of guesses, Louis, you almost hit it nail on the head. 8471 <laughs> Nice. U.S. dollars in December of 2021. That's crazy mm. for a base on guns. Almost nine grand. I want oh, one though. Dollars. You said base too, huh? I didn't even yeah. pick up on that part. That's nuts. Well, what do you think an exclusive exclusive would go for? For like uh, twenty grand, I think, wouldn't it? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, way more than that. If, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Twenty five grand, thirty. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Good That's question. out of my price range. I, but I want a young gun. Like I'm looking for a PSA eight because I have a top loader young gun binder now. So I, I need an OV young gun. Okay. Yeah. Another interesting data point on Ovi's card market is through the card ladder player index. We don't talk about it a lot, but so basically what they do is they track the market or growth or decline of all the, in this case, Ovechkin cards that they have in their index. They have like 21 of his rookies, various different cards are graded, you know, not PSA nines versus PSA tens. Mm-hmm. In the past month, those cards are collectively up 19%. So it does appear the hobby is feeling the hobby besides Phil, uh, again, message him your complaints that the record is imminent, even even if you don't feel so. Um, not looking good now. <laughs> no, the, the market has been gaining, gaining steam. So this brings us back to our main question. Let's say we all have a or a number of Ovechkin cards that we want to sell. And ca- so speculative, speculative what you're going to ask right now. It's so hard to. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting ahead. Well, but but if you did have these cards, Louis. Right. And a lot of people are wondering, well, when when would I sell it? And we don't know the right answer, but all we can do is throw out the perspective of what we would do in the in that situation. Right. And, and so maybe I'll I'll start off, right? I came up with like four scenarios. You could sell it now and you know, try to take any win you could get. I don't know, wait just whether you think it's one week or three weeks, the optimal time before the you think the record is imminently going to be broken. And that could be at the end of the season, beginning of next season. You could sell when he breaks the record or hold for three to six months after the record. And kind of the question we're asking here is when will the mark when do we think the market will be will be highest? So I don't know, Phil, what are your general thoughts? So I I firmly believe I'm really bad at this stuff, but <laughs> if we're playing the game, yeah. uh, if I have a big old VPC that I'm looking to offload and the record is imminent. So in this universe, he breaks the record. I would, I would 100% wait till he breaks the record and sell it on that night. That's what I would do. Humans are crazy. You think, you think that's when the market will kind of reach yeah. its peak? Yeah, well, I think that's the top. I think it'd be very close within that week after, but people, humans, we're, we're silly animals sometimes. See, I'm going to jump in sooner. I'm going to be at like when he's got two goals to go and there's nine games left. I think that's when I'm listing everything. Yeah, maybe that probably sounds better. I mean, I, I think any, yeah, I don't know. Like, what, yeah. what, what are we talking? So, what would this card go for? 5,800 compared to 53? You know, like, is that the delta we're dealing with here? You know, yeah. 
Well, or, or, so, or let me throw another alternative in there. Do you sell it now? If you yeah. paid $3,800 for this card a year ago and you can get 5000 for oh. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Kid, because well, I was going to say, if the kids are out of the house and go on vacation with your wife, boom, sell the card, man. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. It's 5K. That's awesome. I'm a big fan of like setting a sales price I'd be happy with and taking the win early. Now you can leave some meat on the bone that way. There's always a risk in that, but but I think a lot of people fail to to realize. Well, let me put it this way: I wonder if more value is lost selling cards too late than selling too early. I think so. In general, I bet you people hold longer than. Uh, yeah, but there's going to be a cap to this whole thing too. I mean, what did you say? A lot of these cards are up. There's Rookies and stuff are up 19, 20% right now. Yeah. It's it's not going to, there's no way it can keep climbing at 25, 30. Yeah, I can. I think no. it could. You don't think so? I do. At, on top of a $5,000 PSA 10 young gun. Holy Hannah. I um, think, I think, I think that'll hit 6,500 6, at some point. You, you could be right. And a, a big part of that could have to do with that. You know, it is top twelve hundred and like eighty six or something like that, with what, what? a thirty four percent gem rate. So I don't think there's going to be a thousand more OV Young Guns PSA tens in five years. I could be wrong, but huh. it, it seems like that this is a safer bet than a more modern card where there's could be tons of unopened product. Have you so guys it's... ever seen an OV exclusive or high gloss or a Crosby? like in person no. no me neither man what if I, that to me that's oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's the card you know oh oh man who's got the jersey numbered ovi who's got that someone out there's got that uh, i might have been on card ladder i think that if you yeah? look at the, the top hold on i'm not a jersey oh. number guy but i mean for that that'd be pretty cool well you, you can know? have the high glass too because you're gonna have number oh, eight. the number eight mm. he's eight right yeah he's eight okay yeah yeah the eight number eight high gloss oh my goodness who has that now now you're gonna get hate mail that says you don't even know what ovi's number is phil it's eight i'm pretty sure <laughs> it is okay, eight. i'm it looking through eight. the great sales. i talk out loud that's why i get in trouble all the time like it's so silly what's that quote oh right? oh wait a minute wait a minute that card is actually sold so in march of 2023 Via Golden, the Ovechkin Young Guns High Gloss, number eight out of ten, sold for oh, take a guess. Uh uh twenty-eight thousand dollars. No, there's no way that's way too high. What? Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Well, hey, you guess eighteen. What do you guess, Louis? Uh this is Young Guns High Gloss, eight out of ten. No, I'm back Young to twenty thousand. High back gloss, to 20, eight out of ten. What did you say, Phil? Twenty-eight thousand. Oh, uh twenty-two. Fifty-four thousand dollars. Holy oh, yeah. crap! Fifty-four large. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Wow. Oh, that yeah. is nuts, man. Ha half a six figure. Wow. That's who are these people? I want to meet them. I want to be their neighbors. <laughs> now you wonder if a card like that'll come up as he gets near the record, right? Because that would be if somebody bought it like as an investment, that would probably be the mm. time to yeah. to sell it. Okay, so or... you know we'll wrap this up. Uh, been talking That's crazy. about so, so final thoughts so again phil if you have if you have that card you have the ovechkin young guns high gloss uh eight out of ten yeah. and you want to you know you know it's not part of your pc you no, i'm keeping it, it. In, you want to turn it into shane pinto young guns mm -hmm. when are you selling it to maximize value you're not oh i know i not. know this is make-believe but i just would keep the card do you oh, have but to, if, uh, I, if I if I was do we have to sell it? So, yes, you have to sell it. Okay, fine. My kids are starving. They haven't eaten in two weeks. Um, I would probably. You know what? I like what Louis said. I think I would sell it with him. Two goals left. I've changed my mind. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Are I like. You I like with the, that, Louis. Um, not with that specific card. I would probably okay. dump that thing now if I could make ten to nineteen percent on it. See you, bye. So maybe put it up for buy it now right yeah. now and then auction in it as you get if it doesn't sell oh i i've been it at 100k always oh. yeah. <laughs> there's a risk there though and actually jeremy brought up something on his show that about doing that about kind of putting it on ebay for six months with kind of a, a big price is that that could work against you if you auction it because if it's been on ebay for four months and nobody's bought it 
does that kind of create the perception in the marketplace that it's not as desirable? Like real estate. Yeah. I think right. we should take the house off the market right off now. The, yeah, Give you're right. Three months exactly. To like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I, I think I would sell. Uh, I'm kind of leaning towards now a week or two before he breaks the record. So we'll see. So what yeah, we all went with Louis. Well, your original. Uh, yeah, good call. Well, I think what we can do too is we can track his. I'll make a note to track his young guns as of today. Okay. And then we can go back when he breaks the record, Phil. When he okay. when he breaks the record and look at you know when would the optimal time have been? Just sort of playing Monday morning quarterback there. Are there yeah. any PSA fives? Can you check card ladder? I, I I'm looking for a PSA five or six. <laughs> that would that'd be the PSA pop reports, but uh, okay. we have, you can do that later. Uh, sure. We're gonna move on. Slap Sharks is a gung show partner sponsor. We're thankful for their support of our show. The huge post expo Slap Sharks weekly eBay auction ends tonight. More than forty four hundred cards to choose from and bid on. A monster monster auction. Uh, post haste, Phil. Do they say that in Canada? Post haste? Or is that I don't know English? what that means. British. Okay. Like quickly. Uh, Oh yeah, quickly. Quickly. Head to slapsharks.com, get those bids in. So Phil, can I tell Karin that you're good down? You know, you buy cards in bulk. So can I tell him like you're good for 750 or 800 cards? I buy a lot of you... cards off of Slab Sharks. They just don't know. Yeah. Maybe they know it's me. I don't know. Yeah, well, good. You support our, our sponsor. Mm -hmm. Think of the mail day you could have Friday if you bought like 800 cards tomorrow. That would be pretty awesome on your show. And if you just happen to be a Canadian hockey cards collector, maybe have not yet taken the plunge into slap sharks sweet hobby nectar that makes your life selling cards on ebay so simple easy and hassle-free we'd give you our strongest recommendation to check it out you like that sweet hobby nectar phil mm. <laughs> i like i like that uh, makes little to nectar, no yeah. sense but i just felt I like saying it i don't like how you say nectar nectar it's like uh girls don't like the word moisture they can't moisture. stand it all four girls moisture. all your two wives <laughs> and the other two friends yeah. that are listening they don't like moisture <laughs> not sure why. yeah no no girl likes moisture <laughs> All you have to do is submit your cards via their easy peasy to use website or app. Maybe drop them off with Slab Sharks rep at a local show. And if you live in Hogwarts or Moncton, I guess, wherever it's called, <laughs> he's still here. He's still in the, mm. the card dealer. <laughs> he hasn't left my house yet. He's still here. What? He's in bed. He's, he's is he squatting? Is he squatting? Yeah, I, I he's a squatter. He's a, he, I told him he's got a free month. He's not feeling well. He's, he's trying to shake the cold. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Post expo flu. Yeah. Well, there's so many options to make it even easier for you, um, right, to sell your cards. But that's not all, Phil. I saw in your face. You, you thought that was all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're not done. But and, wait, there's How more? can it possibly get any better? Well, there's more. Oh. Pinch yourself, buddy, because it can. Not only does Slab Sharks do it all, your cards get listed in one of the biggest, bigly, bigly hockey auctions there is, the weekly Slab Sharks uh, eBay auction. Uh, I like them apples, Phil. I like them apples. Head to slapshacks.com for complete consignment info, including payout rates, and to get the process started. Happy news! Happy news! Happy news! Happy news! You did I didn't say see the, Ukrainian. I, I, I haven't seen Yulia. She's working overtimes at pharmacy. I hey. trust you for anything. All right. Yeah. We're going to start, mind. boys, with... I uh, haven't done this in a couple months, uh, or a month, I guess I should say. The, uh, the Road to Infinity. Nice. Uh, time to check in. It's where we're tracking the dramatic and rapid rise of the Connor Bedard Young Guns PSA 10 since it hit LCS shelves this past March. We know it's already the most graded hockey card ever by PSA. The question is now, how far will it go? That's a question everyone wants, everyone wants to know that, Bob Louie. Everyone wants to know. Yeah. Many people think you have the answer. No. Nope. So, uh, while nobody does, in fact, have a crystal ball, we can update and get everyone centered in on the facts. Uh, sound good, boys? Should we look at the facts? Sounds good. Just the facts, Black? Jack. It's a facts check. Last time we updated the Road to Infinity, the Bedard Young Guns PSA 10 pop count had risen to just below 6,000 at 5,893. I'm pretty confident today we're, we're going to hit above the 6K mark. It's just a matter of, I guess, how far beyond at this point. And per the most recent uh, car, PSA pop reports, and is certified by the accounting firm Perfetti, Byfield, and Pinto, <laughs> the PSA 10 pop gun for the Connor Bedard base young guns PSA 10 is now up to you. drum roll Troy. Here, are you guys ready? Here we go. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm super excited. 6,191. 298 oh. more. Crazy. That's an increase of 298 PSA 10s from our last update, October 28th. 
in total. 13,862 copies have now been graded, which makes this by far the most graded hockey card ever by PSA. Crazy. 44% um, updated gem rate, right? On the Young Guns Bedard PSA 10. And because it's less than 50%, that means that there's more PSA 9s and PSA 10s. There's actually 328 more PSA 9s. <laughs> Now, when you go back to the 13,862 copies that have now been graded, the second most graded card is the Yager 1990 OPG Premier that has 12,629, so more than 1,200 more graded Bedard cards. And it just what, keeps chugging along. What's the third? I don't know. Oh. Good question. Good question. So, yeah, I don't know. I think by the end of the year, it's probably a good bet that we're, what, looking at, Seven thousand, something like that. So we'll keep, uh, we'll keep going. Why here. not? Why not? Why not? Okay, moving along. Quick, uh, want to give an update on the Canada Post Strike update that we referenced in our sort of mail issues with Rip Party. The <laughs> strike continues. We're almost a week into it. Apparently, very little progress has been made. The Postal Workers Union and Crown—that's how you refer to it, right, Phil? Crown Corp. Side? Yep, it's Crown, Crown Corporation. Corp. Have been meeting with a special mediator. Uh, it seems like the key issue is the postal workers are looking for a 24% wage increase weepers, over, I think, a four-year period. And the crown is offering 11.5%, so they're pretty far off. We're already mm -hmm. seeing the impact that this strike is having across the hobby. Uh, one of our partners, Slab Sharks, we just talked about, has taken what I think is a great step of upgrading their shipping for all orders to ensure packages get delivered uh, at their expense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Their Make note, we we are That's not so slab sharks. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good showing of hobby leadership, and I think long term thinking. It sucks that they have to spend more for shipping as a result. As a result, and so yeah, go go to slab sharks, maybe buy a card and help them recoup that. Yes. Uh, eBay at CA sales outside of slab sharks are probably being most affected right now. I've seen a number of news articles about that. Uh, I can imagine this impacting the breaking community too. I don't know, like what oh, other yeah. breaking. That's not going to be good. Now, along those lines, I saw that Whatnot shut down shipping to Canada in the interim. So they're. Oh, having... that's awesome. Oh. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, I don't even. I downloaded Whatnot once on my phone yeah. and it felt like cancer. So I got rid of it really quick. I don't know how oh. to use that platform. Big here in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, I would assume, Phil, there's got to be a ton of pressure mounting to get this resolved. Uh, has it been a. Is it a big story over there? It, there? It, Download. Yeah, it is. It, but it's just. I feel like it's. Um, it, it's. It's always. I feel like teachers and postal workers are always threatening to go on strike. So yeah. it's. I don't know. My whole life, it's been the same thing. I'm are you? Like, do you have any sort of read on this? Or are you? Are you uh, the, go the, the government will step in. It's. It's not. They're not. They're not going to let this go for long. It would be way too damaging, right? Yeah, I think a lot of damage has already been done. We're not we're not in the business of digging d deeper holes, and I I hope our I hope our leaders, our elected leaders, uh, realize that and they come to uh, an agreement sooner than later. You know, so eleven percent, twenty four percent, meet them in the middle at sixteen point seven five. Let's go. Give me my cards. Okay. <laughs> All right, one more story to get to. We have our first coach firing in the NHL this season. The Boston Bruins have let Jim Montgomery go. After an eight, nine, and three start to the season. Here's what Bruins GM Don Sweeney had to say about the firing. He says, Our team's inconsistency in performance in the first 20 games of the 2024 25 season has been concerning and below how the Bruins want to reward our fans. I believe Joe Sacco, who is named a replacement or interim coach, has a coaching experience to bring players and the team back to focusing on the consistent effort the NHL requires to have success. We will continue to work. To make the necessary adjustments to meet the standards and performance of our support, our supportive fans expect. So Montgomery served as a Bruins coach for just two years after being hired in July of 2022. Now, over his tenure with the team, he compiled a record of 120, 41, and 23, <laughs> and he just got fired. Right. Now, this isn't a mass show, but I think that's pretty good. It's so good, in fact, that over that time period, it's the best record for a coach in the NHL. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, he's just a, yeah. what do they call a scapegoat, I guess? Yeah. And now remind you guys, two seasons ago, he led the team to a 65, 12, and 5 record, which is the best single season record in NHL history. But, right, after this rough 20 game stretch to 2025, yeah, even you're the done, coach Jim. with the best record can't be saved. So, I, what's mm. going on? It's like, it's always the coach. Always the coach. 
It's always the coach. It starts right? with the coach. Yeah, it starts with unless you're. Uh, unless you're yeah. It just seems like this franchise is such a poop show right now. It's it's every week it's something. Well, Maybe I don't. Sam the... Neely's not helping anything. He's 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 part of the old guard, good old boys club. Yeah. Like him or not, I I don't mind him, but I don't yeah. think he has room to maneuver with his thoughts. He looks pretty my way or the highway, you know. It seems like, a, and I've said this before, I don't want to be a broken record, but their culture has to be so broken where it's one thing after another. It's drama with Pasta benching him and then drama with Barjan and drama with Jeremy Swayman. Fine by me. I need them mm-hmm. to not make the playoffs. My sons aren't even going to get 80 points this year, so we need all the losers in our oh. conference we can get. Well, that's good because a little birdie told me they're about six points out of first in their division. So Yeah, they're not even playing that bad. They're just not playing Boston, Boston hockey, you know? Hacky. Hacky. Mm. Yeah. So what are we about? I just don't know. It's like at what point do Neely and Sweeney start to f- have uh culpability in all this? We'll see. Or yeah. Yeah. all right, well they put it together. As the world turns, the daily soap <laughs> opera of the Boston Bruins. I'm more mm-hmm. of a young and the restless guy. Okay. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> well, that's hobby news we're going to jump over to hobby over underrated uh, I love this bit yeah, it's, fun. Uh, it's our third installment of hockey hobby over underrated it's uh, so how it works so we throw out a bunch of hobby topics via one of our world famous hobby polls on Instagram <laughs> hey where is it hobby polls yeah! Yeah! <laughs> that's a timing joke Louie yeah I know my bad. <laughs> it's still you. funny it's still funny it's the best i love it yeah. um okay so today we're going to do part two of our 2024-25 hobby underrated we prepared 12 over under questions uh this week so to clarify i'm gonna pick what i think it is and what the hobby thinks it is yep All and right. as always you're gonna take on troy for superiority Okay. Guessing the hobby responses. All right. The, you'll give your personal opinion first. Um, Baba Louie will keep score between the two of you, whoever wins, and the whoever wins will be the best looking. Uh, okay. Any questions? Troy, you look scared. Are you scared? I'm ready. I got to defend my title. Oh, okay. please get out of here. All right, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Phil, Phil just looks mean. Troy, don't let Phil's mustache fool you. He's really a, <laughs> a I got a nice gray beard going too. I'm trying to compete, but it's not working. <laughs> I don't even, you here don't even go. look like you shaved for like a month. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Okay, question one. Over, underrated, Matt Vi Mitchkov. Troy, is he over or underrated? He is. I'm going to go underrated by, what's my thing again? The hobby says hobby. And so the, you think? Yeah, your own personal thing? opinion and then the hobby. Oh, personal opinion, underrated. Hobby, uh, I'm going to go underrated on both. Okay. I'm the same. I'm the same. Okay, well, what's yeah. the answer here? Oh, yes. was... see, underrated. Wow, a lot of Matt by Mitchkoff's team going on in the hobby. So it's still wow. tied after one question. This is uh, incredible. Uh, a lot of suspense. The drama is high. So are we zero or are we there? Look at one? There's 12. All right. And we're going we're gonna to alternate going first. Okay, question two. The Cup NHL Glory Shields. These are the kind <laughs> of shield cards out of 10. <laughs> are they over or underrated? Phil, you go first. You say personally if you feel they're over underrated and what the hobby thinks i i hope good listener are you listening are you ready i'm gonna shoot my shot i think they are massively overrated and i think the hobby thinks they're overrated too hmm. what do you I'm, think I'm, I'm with you i agree 100 overrated oh. both all right well let's look at the answer does the hobby agree yes 60 percent to 40 percent 60 percent of the hobby it doesn't matter what the hobby thinks it's what mitch thinks what does mitch think you should have asked him uh, what, what, mitch mitch think about this? what are you saying grop man what are you saying <laughs> what are you doing yeah, well. oh, we had a few hundred respondents too like 300 something like that so 400 i can't remember so a lot well, of i have to fully admit i had to look up what image of them because <laughs> glory <laughs> shields threw me off and you know yeah. when i think of glory i think of something else so anyways okay Question number three. Oh, Phil, Ooh, you ready? Oh, EPAC. Oh, Over man. or underrated? Man. Now, Troy gets to go first. So, Troy, personally, and then what the hobby thinks. Okay. Personally, underrated. Hobby says overrated. 
Ditto. No. Yeah, I'm the same. Okay. You guys are making this no fun. All right, but that's it. You got to be true. Be true yeah, no, I'm honest. I'm honest. I think so, yeah. So is the EPAC, is it over underrated by the hobby? Yeah. 71% says overrated. Yeah. And it's, they're wrong. The hobby's wrong. It's actually very underrated. Okay. I'm not kidding. Guys, I've, been, <laughs> I've been on that site, I swear, since a straight month, just putting packs and boxes in my cart. And I haven't pulled the trigger yet, still. <laughs> this is an ongoing thing. It's been like a struggle. And I don't know why, because that's really, I don't know. It's weird. You can't hit is the go finger, button, Is huh? the finger twitching? Twitching on the mouse? It's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. But then... I saw the well. Then I went. I went down the rabbit hole of looking at those two other sites. Like, what is it? Upper Deck Collect or whatever that thing is. They have the comics and then the well, Evolution. Is yeah, Evolution. I got mad and then I just <laughs> closed yeah. it down. <laughs> okay, uh, EPAC is down tonight. I just saw like a Twitter notification. So is Reddit for some thing. reason. Oh, is it? Really? I thought I saw that email. I didn't read it. I thought it said like EPAC update. So I thought, well, are they actually going to update the graphics to like a 2020 site now instead of like, yeah. 2010? Oh. Okay. Well, it's still tied through question three. We're on to question four. Newly released today, Upper Deck in Green. Oh, I've heard, I've read lots of. Lots of Ooh, salty okay, opinions okay. on the green. <laughs> All right, over underrated. Well, Troy, Phil gets to go first this yes. time. So, Phil, what, oh, what is that's... your personal and then the hobby opinion? This is hard because I, I I looked at a lot of cards today and I really like some of them and I really don't like other ones. So I'm gonna say, well, my pick doesn't matter. I'm can I pick neutral? No, Switzerland. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the hobby's gonna say it's overrated. Yep. And uh, I'm gonna pick a neutral. No, you gotta pick one. Pick oh, you one. heard that? Okay. Uh, I think it's underrated. So over under, I'll be overrated. Yeah. You personally, awesome. I, I want to give UD a shot on this. I think they tried hard, and I think they're onto something. Maybe just not there yet. All right. Does anyone See, know the price of a box of ingrained? A lot. I think it's like three sixty. Okay. US. So I'm going. Hobby says overrated. Troy is gonna go overrated as well. Ooh. Okay. So you guys, did you guys both pick hobby overrated? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So again, you're all right. Well, what was the answer? Oh, oh you, you were almost going oh. through Switzerland. With both the lost. You oh both lost. Gosh. Really? Fifty-two was... percent of the hobby says underrated to forty-eight overrated. So again, very tight. Uh, very tight well, race. That is the... very surprising. I was swayed by the comments saying some of the cards look like leaf cards. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> But I, I, I am looking at the set right now, and I mean, they look nice. They, they do look yeah. nice. Well, it's got the three year rookie class, too. It's got rookies from 2021. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that, listen, Fail. listen. That, they're, that's, they're, I, okay. Okay. Next question. All right. All right. Here's another big one Mitch Marner, Lightning <laughs> Rod, controversial <laughs> player. <laughs> Troy gets to go first. Troy, what do you personally Mitch feel? Marner Mitch Marner overrated, and also Persley's overrated, and I'm still. Like shell shock. Yeah. I don't know what you call it when Jeremy Lee asked me what I thought about Mitch Marner on our first like <laughs> panel at the expo. <laughs> and I literally had an internal panic attack. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't follow Toronto. I don't like Mitch Marner. I don't care about him. And oh my gosh. So I'm going to go overrated. Overrated, overrated. What are you going to say, Phil? Overrated, overrated. Yeah. Okay. You guys are going the same every year. So question five what's the answer? What did the hobby say? Oh, I Lock these seven percent. Lock it overrated. Or is that uh, is that the uh, Toronto influence? This was because I mean this one is so specific to one team and one player. It's yeah. like, but do you think he's the most like lightning rod player in the NHL right now? Though, I kind of do. In the NHL, is... no, yeah. no, I don't think so. Well, well, I think would Bedard's be... more of a lightning rod. You, oh, you know okay. what? I, you probably talked about him, but I was listening to Spit and Chicklets. Since since he's been in the league, Bedard is the absolute worst faceoff man in the NHL. No. Oh, Troy, that's horrible. Wasn't that the bit on Crosby too, though? Yeah, yeah. And, now and they're trying the to, but they're thinking about moving Bedard to wing. There's all this stuff. They should move him to wing, take the responsibilities of the center off him, and whatever. We'll see. All right, question six. It's all tied up still. Game used patches. Are these over or underrated? Bill, you go first. Give your personal opinion first, and then what you think the hobby thinks. Uh, I think game use patches. I have a. I, I I want them to be. I don't know how to answer this. I want them to be better. So I think they're overrated now. 
That, okay. Is that how I should take that? Yeah, I think overrated, overrated. But they're not. I just think they need to be... I just think they need a renaissance. They need a... Uh, sure. Y- you know what, what happened when, the, uh, when, when things get readjusted? Like Christianity had it. No, it had its... Rebirth? Um, like the 95 Thesis? Are we talking about Martin Luther? What are we no, talking about? No, like... <laughs> Like yeah, you know, getting, uh, the podcast. We're getting I know, deep I know, in, but I ended saying, up at like, a religious college, so I, I listen, the, osmosis, the, the I Knights Templar. If you, if you didn't agree with the Knights, they they'd whoop you, right? They'd kill you. But then uh, the Christians realized you can't do that. So well, they the Crusades, had a, Crusades. Yeah, the no, no, but no, after no, no, the Crusades, the, the, uh, the they had a the Spanish a, Inquisition. No, nobody no, expects no. the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> no, the um, like a reform. It it a reform reformation. Well, yeah, they. I think reforms the word. <laughs> this I was is going for. off the rails. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Colin, I forget put on this one. Okay, so Phil says overrated, overrated, and Gamey's yeah. patches. What do you think, Trey? I'm underrated, hundred percent. I love Gamey's both? patches. Both, both. Yeah, but so do I. Uh, okay. Oh well, this could be. Uh, what, somebody's going to take the lead finally, Louis. What do we have? Oh. Yeah, baby. Six percent of the hobby says underrated to only fourteen percent overrated. Now, is this where Phil claims, like last time, that I had the questions beforehand? No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to get flamed for this. This is not what I, I love. Game use patches, just like the eighty-four percent no? people. No? I just think it needs a. I'll find the between word. between Ovi mail and this, Phil. You're going to have a lot. I can't of wait. Time. You know, there's like well, a, well, I'm busy you know, the next three, four days, so I won't be reading now. Yeah. Okay. Well, Phil hates game use patches. Oh, I got Question smoked seven. on this one. Troy is a commanding one nothing lead. <laughs> Question seven: SGC grading. Ooh. Troy gets to go first this time. Do you think? What do you think personally? And what do you think the hobby thinks? I will go. I'll go. Personal. Oh man. Pers- personally, I just I'm not the grader. I don't like grading, but they seem to like try to do some good things. So I'll go underrated on both. Underrated on both. All right, Phil, what do you think? I SGC. really like SGC if I want a card graded for my PC. So I think they are underrated. And I think the hobby's gonna say they're oh boy. I think the hobby's gonna say they're underrated. I forgot already what you said, Try <laughs> What did under, you say? I said the hobby? I said okay, underrated. so you both said under. All right, well, here's what the hobby says. 50 oh. 50. Oh. So that's uh, uh just cancels it's a, out. It's a cancels out. It cancels out. You guys have the same answer. I could have gone yeah. back and looked at the exact number, but uh, we don't need to. So still I'm one nothing. I'd love to hear opinion, like comments on that one. Oh. Question eight. The recently released 2022-23 The Cup. Is it overrated or underrated? Phil, give us your personal opinion and then the what do you think the hobby said? Uh I think it's I think it's underrated, and I think the hobby said it's underrated. Yeah. I'm gonna go overrated on both. Oh, really? Well, either Troy takes a a dominant two nothing. What question lead. are we on? What question are we on? This is question Nine, eight. eight. Oh, question we got eight. lots of time. Lots of time. Okay. What does the hobby say, Louis? Come on! I, I, went from this, I, I went from the aspect that it's still eight hundred or nine hundred a box, or whatever. But a it's thousand yeah. box. Yeah. See, I didn't think of the money at all. I just thought of what's in the box. It's beautiful. It's one of the, the best cup years ever. Ever. What's in the box? What's in the box? But who's your? I mean, yeah. I just rookie class. Yeah. I mean, Slapkowski. Are you care, and... Troy? You got it right. <laughs> yeah. So sixty percent of the... think through it. I'm thinking. Yeah. Sixty percent of the hobby said overrated to forty percent said underrated. Question nine. We have four questions left. Troy is a very commanding two nothing lead. Bill, you got to go on a hot streak here. Lane Hudson. Troy, you get to go first. Is he overrated or underrated? Uh oh man. I'm gonna go. Hobby says underrated. Troy has no opinion, but I'll go underrated too. Yeah, you can't pick neutral. That's not the game. Underrated both. <laughs> so Troy goes underrated for both. What do you think? I'm- Bill? I think the hobby's going to say he's overrated. Yeah, you're going to get I this. I think he's. Uh, I don't know what I think anymore. Come on, Montreal fans! I hope they all voted and said underrated. Let's do this. I think the hobby's going to say he's overrated, and I. I don't yeah. know, man. I think he's underrated. I'm going to go with underrated. Okay, let's see what the hobby said. Yeah, I just once I saw. Wow! Stanley, I knew it. Smoke you, Iverson. Smoke I knew you. it. No goals, eleven assists. Yeah, I. I'm... 
73 percent of the hobby said overrated to 27 percent underrated so that that was a fail yeah so that gets a 2-1 now Troy yep. has a lead we have three questions left question 10 opg platinum seismic gold Phil goes first this time. Phil, what do you think personally? And what does the hobby think? Underrated, underrated. Yeah, I'm, I've you know, even though we've talked about it, it had its run, it got a lot of hype for that couple of years. I still think they're underrated. Underrated both. All right. Uh, this is going to be a push, but let's see what the hobby said. Yeah. Yeah. 68% said underrated. I, mean, I like, I like, underrated. I like size of gold over like golden treasure. I think these look better. <laughs> Well, you could get a golden treasure and sell it and buy like four sides yeah. of gold. So that yeah, would be exactly. The way there you go. All right. Um, how many more questions? Two more questions. Oh boy. What's the score? Had to do this one again. It's our first repeat ever in hockey hobby oh. over underrated. So Connor Bedard, is he overrated or underrated? Troy, you go first. Overrated. Both right now. At this current juncture, overrated on both. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I'm gonna have to say that too. Okay, so once again, it's another push. What did the hobby say? Yep. Seventy six percent said overrated, twenty four percent underrated. Does that surprise you guys? Nah. Nope. And it's I feel I feel bad because he's what nineteen now. I you know we're old? picking on the little kid. Yeah. <laughs> nineteen year old had ton. I mean, what do, what do you do? I mean, you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. I mean, yeah. it's, he it was kind of in a no win situation. Well, his cards are priced like. He's got to score like have like forty goals. Exactly, right? and that's the the problem. Speaking now, because of, oh no. he was our in our first poll, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to do a little comparison to what the vote was then. Oh yeah, versus today. So, Louis, you want to throw that one up? Oh, he doesn't have it. Uh, I think it was right, roughly about the same. Maybe that's why he's been. F- uh, okay. Well, we'll look at that next time. So. On to the last one. Question 12. Panini Prism Hockey. Now, Troy's a 2-1 to lead. Best you can do is tie, Phil. Okay. Or Troy wins. So, Phil, you get to go first. Do you want me to go first? Just so like, yeah, 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 you should go first. All yeah, right. so Underrated on both by a 1,000%. I love Panini Prism Hockey. Well, <laughs> okay, I pick overrated. <laughs> there you go. I pick overrated okay. on both, yeah. Sorry, Seth. <laughs> right. well, let's see what the hobby said in Panini Prism Hockey. Wow. Yeah. Overwhelmingly underrated. That gives Troy a 3-1 to one victory over Phil. And, of course, that makes him the best-looking contestant on the <laughs> I'll show. I'll get you next time, Troy. I'll get you next now, time, Troy Bear. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back with another edition of Over Underrated soon. Okay, moving along to new product releases. Our new product releases is brought to you by Mint Inc. Uh, friends and partners there. Did you guys see that Mint Inc. was playing our show the other day on their very on their huge uh the, the huge like video wall they have in their yeah, store? Yeah. They're playing our show. No way. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, that's that awesome. awesome. Love for, it, for Johnny. people that that's were in great. there. Yeah. Very, very touching, right? It's super cool to see. For all your hobby box needs in Canada, be sure to check on mintink.ca. Also look them up for singles on their website and they're uh they also have very entertaining their breaks after dark as well you can check them out too yeah johnny's reels are great if you're an instagram mm-hmm. guy they're 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 a lot of fun good energy <laughs> check them out for sure mm-hmm. okay so we missed while we were at the expo the whole premiere thing that product released last week it was 2022 23 upper deck premiere uh thought it'd be fun maybe to check in and see which cards are making the most waves on the secondary markets of course very early on and so we're going to take a look at the top five very early sales, right? It's been about a week. Uh, one thing I want to know before we start this, though, and it'll be interesting to get your guys' perspective on this, too. As we've been alternating between 2022, 2023, and then 2024 products lately, when you have, like, a Bedard release come out, a Bedard rookie product, and then, like, the year before, mm-hmm. you have to almost, like, mentally reset your values because it's... You know, it's a rare exception, right? In the case of Bedard, where cards sell for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars the first day after the release. So, mm-hmm. depending on like where your frame of reference is, uh, you might have to do a little bit of readjustment. Like I said, when we're done, we'll we'll see what you guys think about that. 
Okay, so we're going to go through the top five. Then you guys can um, give your opinions. Uh, all sales made on eBay have been verified as paid for on Terapy. So the top number five top selling to date Premier card is a Mark Stone Premier Mega Patch out of 23 raw. That sold for 215 US dollars on eBay on November 13th, which was release day. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, Mega Patch, right? Yeah. Um, Number four, Dylan Gunther, rookie auto patch out of 249. Raw sold for 240 US on November 15th via eBay. That seems cheap. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Premier RPs. I'm, I like I'm, that. you know, yep. I, yeah, I'm starting to, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't not like, don't them. like them. I don't know. I, you, <clears throat> you got to draw the line somewhere. You know, I'm a cup guy. I'm an OPG sure. platinum guy. I'm turning into an allure guy. I, I can't, like, oh, no, I'm a Premier guy. Like, forget it. They're nice cards, though. I, 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 I'm I, coming around. I'm coming around. You like these, Louis? Uh, I do like the Rookie Beep Auto Patch. Um, I'm still trying to, even though the Mega Patches are cool, I just, they're not, they're not for me. Okay. Number three is a Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi Rookies Dual Patch Tacular. Out of 25 raw, that's sold for $2.41, so $1 more than the Dylan Gunther on eBay on November 16th. What do you think of that as a wild fan, Louis? Mm, oh, Christmas tree. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Boldy and Rossi. I, I love love the idea of what they did with that patch there, so it's cool. Yeah. Number two is a Juraj Slavkovsky rookie mega patch out of 22 that sold for 391 US dollars via eBay on May, or wait, no, not May, on November 5th, 19th. So yeah, just nice a day card. Ago. Beautiful card. I'm a sucker for Hobbs patch, man. That's awesome. Our uh, our buddy uh, Eric uh, from the bench just put his video up tonight and opened a box of this, and he just pulled that Slavkowski 21 out of 22 patch. Oh, oh wow. nice. Well, congrats to him. And then the number one card is a Jack Hughes Mega Patch Logo Patch out of four. Uh, Mega Patch Logo Patch? Jack Hughes Mega <laughs> Patch Logo. Mega Logo Patch out of four. God, what's Ooh. wrong out of four? Wow. Yeah. So for 400 US via eBay on November 15th. So very mega patch heavy. And my, my thought on that is that if you're going to want to collect one of these, like you got to jump on it right away and probably get, so like if you want all four of the hues to make what, I don't know if, if people collect these like rainbows or something like that, or if they can put them together and it makes out the whole logo, whatever it does. Oh, right. Have you guys seen some posts on Facebook of guys like, I just need six more cards to finish. And they have like 40 cards. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many. It's a, whoa. I thought I was uh, aggressive with my, wow, man, those guys are way crazier than me. Good for them. Do you, do you guys see what I was talking about, though, about the prices and adjusting down? Where, yes. I mean, our range at number five was 215 bucks to 400 US. I mean, if this was a Bedard release, it'd be like, for 17,000. Right. <laughs> How many packs? I don't know anything about Premier. How many packs in the box? Just one? One. 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 It's kind of like one like pack, poor six man's cards, cup? I think. Yeah. It's a poor man's yeah. cup. Yeah, I, I would say Premier and Ultimate are kind of that one step below the cup, the two yeah. packs. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I I know. I figured that. I just, is Ultimate one pack a box? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And most people would put Ultimate rightfully probably ahead of Premier just because yeah. of the the NHL the shield, shield yeah. cards. But. Your glory, your NHL glory. I still like that. I we talked about it. I think it's going away, but I still like that hand numbering. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's nice. Sad about that. One nice thing too about not being a 2023 product is we had well technically six, but six different players in the top five. It wasn't the if this right. would have been like like when we did OPG Premier, it's the top five selling Bedard cards from 23 right. <laughs> OPG Premier. So at least that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, like it. All right. Any other thoughts on Premiere? Or are we is ready Premier, to um, how, well, how much is a box? Sorry to put you on the spot. Do you know? I have no idea. Maybe could, we can look that up while we're okay. Um, I want to switch over to ingrained really quick though, because the product came out today. So uh, I watched a number of live breaks, try to get a flavor of the product and how the hobby's reacting to the cards. I don't know. Did you guys check any out or? Yeah, I yeah, I stopped, that you're... yeah, I, I was watching. Playing. Uh, I, I think overall the cards seem pretty nice. I, I'm kind of actually digging, and usually it's a little gimmicky to me, the um, the carved in time, the wood cards. 
I mean, I don't think they're gonna be like have like huge appreciation or market value to them, but I think I, don't know. I think I could see a few cards in there um hopping into my PC, you know? Yeah. The one thing though that and this is very subjective point of view, but I feel like so I watch like uh a guy do like a three master case break so 30 boxes i felt like on average you know there's a few duds but that having these this three different rookie classes and the legends and the vets that i I saw more boxes that i was like huh those are pretty nice cards versus duds or meh boxes i don't know do you guys feel the same way did you feel like there was generally good value in a box where yeah myself in the situation where if this was my box would i have been happy with it can I, uh, I, I didn't see enough. I just stopped by an LCS and I just saw some in hand. So I, I didn't see as much as you did. I, I want to revisit something quickly though. So Cole Caulfield's rookie card is in this ingrained, correct? Yes. Okay. Hold it's on. An update. Yes. But it's not. So this is for what's a real rookie card. That was not printed in his rookie year. So do you consider that or? You can't you can't just print three years of rookie cards, put them out in in this year, and say, "Oh no, those are rookie cards." I, I'm sorry, I disagree. Those are not rookie cards. Those are not. I don't. Yeah, I'm, I don't. I'm looking for something really quick. Uh, on I'm trying to find out like what the back of the card says. Is it the same design on all all the rookie cards? No, no, or? no, the, no. They're different designs. Uh, we need to find. I'd like to see the print also, on the back of the card. Yeah, it was 2021. I'm trying to find, like, uh, because if it says 2021 upper deck on the back of the card. Then, yeah, I guess it is. Then I don't like the way it's happening, though. You know? Yeah, it, it's kind of weird in that regard. But but I think, like, that's what will end up happening with Stature, too, in that. So they um, did print some. But not like, are they printing it? I, I know it's silly, but I think it kind of matters. I'd like to know. Like, if they didn't produce, finding... Josh, if they Go didn't ahead. produce five years of the cup, okay, five years, and then in five years from now, we're like, oh, 23, 24, uh, it's going to be all in the 29, 30 cup. And the, who's going to get the Bedard rookie? That's not Bedard's rookie. We all know <laughs> that's not his role, but it's got a different print on the back. It just something's off there, man. It doesn't feel right, you know? Yeah, am yeah. I explaining it properly? I yeah. think. Okay. <clears throat> Two fifty no. US for that box still. Oh, Premier. Yeah. Well, it's like three forty. Premier. 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 Oh, Premier. Premier. Oh. Well, well, so the interesting thing is, uh, uh, Matt Boldy was a Matt Boldy was was he twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three? Look, I, I used Caulfield because I thought it was twenty one twenty two. Caulfield's twenty twenty. Why am I totally brain no. farting? <laughs> Uh, all right, we're back from a short pause. So I found a Slavkovsky, who is a 2022 rookie, of course. And it's a rookie signature shots auto, right? So it says rookie signature shots on the card. It's one of those carbon auto with the paint pen cards. Mm-hmm. On the back, mm-hmm. it says 2023-24 in green. Mm-hmm. That is weird. Interesting, eh? So is that a rookie card? No. Is it even a rookie year card? No. But the problem is because it says rookie on it, anyone that listens on eBay is gonna so it you know I think it's yeah. a perception that it is a rookie, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't love that. I, I think that if if they were gonna do that, that it should say 2022 ingrained on it. Great. So at least have that year. But maybe it they're just acknowledging the fact that it wasn't printed earlier. Because a lot of update cards were actually printed earlier. And like in the case of autos. We never weren't returned to upper deck in time to be included in the pack out. And so we're that, actually created during that player's sort of, you know, rookie class. That is release. better. That I would love that. And I like they at least, you know what? Even lie to me and I'll believe you that you printed <laughs> it that year. I'm happy with that too. I, as long as it says the year on the back of the card, I don't, you, you want to know? I think upper deck is kind of maybe watching to see how this would be received with the, the updates and the, Sure. I don't, I'm not. I'm using the wrong terminology. I think if people are like, "Oh, I don't mind this at all," then that's a new model uh, card company. It's not necessarily upper deck, but they might do. And I, as a collector, I don't want that. I don't want stature every three years. 
with updates right. of rookie cards. I, I don't want that. I, I So if Upper Deck is watching, I hope they have some feedback that I, I, a print year annually is is what I like. And I think that's that's what the hobby would like, I think. The flip side is they're trying to get more, like, hits in the pack it's in the, in the pack I, I get than it. having no name rookies and so it doesn't feel a, authentic to me it's like oh we're just gonna skip a couple years and jam them all the good stuff in you know maybe i'll <laughs> yeah. change my tune in five years i don't know but right now it doesn't do it for me now interesting too is that so a, we got a youtube comment based on our last show where we did the checklist review where in the commenter on youtube drew the comparison that He's kind of like, well, come on, guys. You know, ingrained is really a legends-based product, and will be very successful uh, in the vein of SP Legends Signature Edition, which I thought was an interesting comparison. And so, I, I wanted to see do you guys view ingrained in that same pantheon of SP Legends? I don't not? know enough about it. I don't know enough about ingrained. Maybe ask me next week. Maybe I'll buy a box. Maybe I'll buy a box and see if I like it. Well. The, the key difference, of course, is that SP Legends is all legends. We're in green. Yeah. That's part of the checklist. Now, there are some nice. amazing, like we talked about, there's Gordy Howe stick pieces and John Bellavo stick pieces. So, some pretty nice legend cards in there. But I don't know, Louis, what do mm -hmm. you think? Oh, uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. They couldn't call it like SP Legends in in green because there's still, there's too many players missing. Yeah. In in, in, in green. To me, you know, I'll be a homer. You know the two I'm gonna say. They're not in no. there. So who? Really? Madonna Broder. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the secondary market sales go. Um, want to see some of those big legend cards hit for sure and kind of see if people chase after those. Last thing, new product releases. We do have a release calendar update from Upper Deck. Uh, they sent one, I think, to us yesterday. So not only do we have the 2023-24 ingrained release come out yesterday at the time you're watching your show, but also Series 1 tins on November 20th as well. Those came out there. Yes. Uh, the only other hockey product-related note is that 2024-25 Artifacts, which was originally slated to be released next week, on November 27th has been pushed back to December 11th. So that's two weeks later. That will give us now three weeks in between new hockey releases, which they seem to come out every week now. So that'll be a, a long break and probably a good thing as because again, so many new products have come out in the past two and a half months that I think collectively the hobby and its businesses and card shops are probably good for a breather at this point. What do you guys think? Yeah, they'll be okay. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that I, I heard a little bit at the expo is that you know hobby shops are having a hard time keeping up with the release calendar. And at, but at the same point, Upper Deck's trying to catch up too. So there's a lot of these, right? Do you want Upper Deck to be behind? Do you want, you know, how do they space out the releases? One way to catch up without having releases every two days, Phil, is to combine products, but there's the drawbacks to that. Yeah, that listen, there, there might be people that, that it's just my opinion it's just the way i like to collect other people i would think maybe more fair weather hockey like we're fanatics but more fair weather uh hockey card collectors might be like oh that's pretty cool I, then i don't have to pay that close attention all the time and i get more hits you know that's got to be open-minded for them too gotcha all righty mm -hmm. it's time for our fanatics collect weekly hockey preview fanatics collect is a gosh partner sponsor their support makes our show possible the November premiere auction ends tonight. Do not miss it. The monthly premiere auctions are always amazing. And actually, I'd recommend checking out Jeremy Lee and Adam Gray. They do a very good job covering the auction. So if you're like an auction geek like I am <laughs> a little bit, you can go to Jeremy's YouTube channel and tune in and follow the auction that way. And these are all in the premiere. It's all Grail type cards. What I think it's like three pretty big McDavid rookies and a, a PSA 8.5 OPG Gretzky, I believe are the hockey cards. Um, but if you're not a high roller or a big spender like Phil from Ottawa, maybe the Fanatics <laughs> Collect weekly auction is more your speed, right, Louie? That's kind of our speed. My it's speed. Proud we, it's proud we hang out in. The yes. current Fanatics Collect weekly auction is live. Head to fanaticscollect.com to place your bids. The three of us best buds are bro chachos. 
We're all bro, buddies. Chachos. Bro, chachos. What if the three oh, amigos? Oh. <laughs> I'm Mark Short, hey, for hey. sure. <laughs> we each spent some time looking through the auction. We'd like to highlight our favorite vintage and modern cards. I'll start first with my favorite vintage card in this week's auction. And it is a 1961 Parker's Dave Keon from Phil's Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, rookie number five. It's a PSA 3.5. Very good plus. I picked this card because I believe for the grade, it has a really, really nice eye appeal. Nice. Like just, mm-hmm. just looking at it, it doesn't look like a 3.5 before you see the label. And listen up, Phil, uh, you might want to get your credit card out of your wallet and place a bid because Keon's one of the most important Maple Leafs in franchise history. I like Dave important. Keon. I respect Dave Keon. <laughs> yeah, you might want a mega bid on that. Mega bid? No mega, mega bid. No mega bid. Okay. Keon is arguably the greatest Leafs player ever. I think in 2016, he was named the greatest Leafs player ever. Phil Kessel, anyone? <laughs> Do you assume at this point, Austin Matthews will be the greatest, considered the greatest Leafs player ever? No. Uh, oh, probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Uh, well, he's a, a Keon's a four-time Stanley Cup champion, Conn winner in 1967, played with the team for 15 years. You know, getting back to the card, though, so, like, if you're looking at like a PSA nine copy of this card, that's like seventy five hundred to ten k US. <laughs> that's insane. So, if, if you want to get you know, a key on rookie that's not perfect, of course, with three point five grade, but looks really great. I mean, the centering is amazing on this card. None of the blemishes or like none of I think the factors that lower the technical grade are distracting, right? So it's not like there's like a hole in Keon's head or marker over his face or or a big crease or something like that. That's very obvious. There's like a stain in the upper left corner. There are, there's wear on the corner. I mean, I'm not going to argue the grade. It's just the eye appeal for the grade, I think is very, very high in this card. At PSA 3.5, there's seven copies. That's sandwiched in between 25 PSA 3s and 41 PSA 4s. Per the card letter sales history, there has not yet been a sale of the 1961 Parker's Dave Keon PSA 3.5 yet. There will be tomorrow or Sunday. <laughs> uh, but the last sale of a PSA 3 was 332 US back in July. Last sale of a PSA 4 was 356 US in early October to give you some frame of reference. And again, in vintage, it's more important to buy the card, not the grade. You got a current bid, Louis? I do. Sitting at 21 US dollars. Woo! I think that's me. I, I put a bid on this one. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I'll put 23. And a boy. I'm going to yeah. get outfit, I'm sure. On to Baba Louis. What is your vintage pick this week? My vintage pick this week is a 1981-82 OPG Dino Cicerelli rookie at uh, Beckett BGS 7.5. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if we've talked a whole lot about Dino on here, so I'll just fill you guys in with a little stuff from his bio. He's a Canadian former professional hockey player who played 19 seasons in the National Hockey League from 1980 to 99. Uh, primarily with the Minnesota North Stars. I believe he was with the North Stars from oh. 80 to 89 or 90, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, played for the North Stars, the Devils, the Red Wings, the Lightning, and the Rangers. He appeared in 1,232 regular season games at 608 goals, 793 assists, totaling 1,401 points. He played what? in eight. Yeah, it is. He played in eighty playoff games, with twenty nine goals and forty one points. He was also selected to the NHL All Star Game four times. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in two thousand ten, he was known for his scoring ability and physical play, and he's remembered as one of the top goal scorers of his era. A little bit shady past, but I'm not going to get into that. Mm-hmm. Um. So like I said, this one's graded uh, BGS 7.5. Uh, it's got a heck of a rough cut if you're into it. Um, and the edges on this one did get a lower grade. I wonder if it's because it's really rough. Yeah, you know, I mean, I where know. do you draw where do you draw the line on a rough cut or, cut or not? I mean, if I want an OPG rough cut, this is awesome. Yeah, I really yeah that's like great. This. I agree with you. Yeah, it's a great card. Phil likes um, a rough cut. Ooh, Love rough cuts. Big fan. Naughty. Mm-hmm. Worst part about it is, which would drive me nuts, because it's very obvious, it's the centering top to bottom. Yeah. Oh, I just noticed. It's a little yeah, kitty wampus in the slab, too. Not not yes. the card's fault, but... Yeah. No, but yeah. 
Um, there was 147 copies of this card graded with Beckett. Found out that the first one was graded December 30th of 1999. And oh. the last graded copy was September 4th of this year. Last sale of the Beckett 7.5 was on March 26th of 2022 for $18. Currently, it can be yours for 5 U.S. dollars. Whoa. Beautiful, Baba Louie. All right, Phil. What vintage card struck your fancy? My vintage card is from 1992. 93 Ooh. it's from upper deck and it's a wayne gretzky buyback okay i know i know i know what you're thinking if you listen to this last episode so i know this is the second wayne or buyback i've picked this week but it's a different yeah. card so it counts and you uh, don't it, own any of these yet do you no not one you're but just I, kind I, of a smitten kitten over them yeah i really like them it just i don't know man so we we previously previewed a 1990 91 upper deck design but that was actually from their buyback program in 2015, 2016. So I get a little confused because this card is, is from 92, 93. And the hologram on the back is just a little baby sticker. And oh. I, I don't understand. Like, did they do this buyback in that same year? I couldn't find any info on it. And then I yeah. tried to find information on Wayne Gretzky buybacks. And a, there's over a thousand Wayne Gretzky buyback cards. They said like there's a lot going on um so i i have to admit i was never really a fan of these before because i always see them and there's so many but not yeah they're just beautiful cards like it i like the 90s early 90s upper deck so i think i'm gonna like you said smitten kitten start to purchase these because there's so many like his most notable one is i think 99 1999 00s i don't know how to say that um on his upper deck sp authentic he uses a blue pen on like a bluey background. It's horrible. It's like so bad. So I, I'm always kind of yeah. laughing at that card. And that's one of the more popular ones. Uh, the current bid for this is 21 bucks. I'm sure it's going to go up way more because it's a C in a CGC slab. Um, but Did yeah, you want to see I, the back of it? You made me get yes, a picture please. of the back. Yes. So the back. Aww. Yeah. Look at his look at his daughter Aww, there. She looks so a lot cute. different. Like uh, if, you, if you have stocks, maybe you should hold because look at that picture. eh? <laughs> <laughs> hold your bags man sometimes they pan out um but go back, the back to the card of, real quick louie the back of oh um, i wanted to go to the back well, well just let me say this really quick okay <laughs> my favorite thing about this card is kind of the ghostbusters like blue yeah. net and the but okay now you can now go back to the back yes yeah, the blue net so the sticker on the back of this card is very very small and on the new on the newer issued buy box they 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 give you almost a piece of paper with a bigger hologram and yeah so this is why i think maybe this was a buyback from like actually that year or the following year but i've been collecting cards since then and i i didn't come across these like i never heard yeah. about these in the 90s so i don't know um but i love this card and i'm really happy to see it on fanatics and i would buy it in a heartbeat especially for 21 bucks yeah there you go so that's my so, pick. yeah so here really quick just because you're on the topic of it, maybe people haven't seen it. I'll show you really quick. This was a Madonna Sign of the Times buyback. And obviously you got the card mm -hmm. with the signature on it. But then this is what also, where is it, that came with it is the buyback yeah. and then the little yeah, hologram so number. That's a bit, that's, a, that's like the one, the buyback from that I showed on our last episode. Mm -hmm. There's it. no consistency in the buy box, and it makes me not nervous, but it stops me from buying them quickly. Sure. Yeah, well, like you should always do your homework. Yeah, I'd like a little more uniformity, but I mean, 10 years ago, who was working at Upper Deck that works there now? Probably not many, right? Well, and this was what? Uh, yeah, probably maybe even longer ago than that, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. Okay, let's switch to modern. My favorite modern card. I knew. 2009. Yeah, I knew you were going to pick this. <laughs> You're Stop. such an open book. Mm. <laughs> Predictable. It's a 2009 Ultra EX Jambalaya, Sidney Crosby. PSA 10, Gem Mint. Uh, I love the coloring of the 2009 yes. Jambalayas. And one thing I appreciate about this card is that Crosby is in the Penguins retro uniform as well. I think it's kind of a cool touch. The PSA 10 pop count on this card is only four. Nine total copies have been graded. One important note, though, 
is that this is not the first Crosby Jambalaya. That would have been the year prior in the 2008 Clear Ultra EX release. So I wouldn't look at this as like a huge investment D type card. It's just a really cool PC card that I think at least should have a chance of holding its value. Now, getting back to the 2009 Jambalaya design, I think why I like it so much is the green and purple background. Give it a feel to me, a New Orleans, New Orleans. I said that really weird. New what Orleans feel. Oh, New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Is that the accent down there? New Orleans? No, no, no. That's what a Minnesotan <laughs> oh. tries to do that. Um, <laughs> if there's any hockey collectors in New Orleans, they're laughing right now. Uh, but I always kind of associate Jambalaya cards with that. It just kind of has a New Orleans feel to me, even though we know that that is not the intention of the card. So per our conversations with G. McLeod uh, from Arena Designs, the originator, her and her husband Earl, of the Jambalaya, the jam in Jambalaya refers to dunking a basketball, as this was a basketball card as it was originally concepted. I thought it was mm. food. No. Jambalaya. Yeah, like That's jambalaya, food. which which is, again, is a New Orleans sort of food. Because the mail uh, never stops. So you guys don't like jambalaya cards? Is that what you're saying? You're no, just, not at all. Uh, Really, I, I no. like <clears throat> I like this one. There's a couple. I'm trying to go back and look at different. There's some years that they're awesome. This one, some. I, I don't like cards that look like circles and ovals. I'm not a big fan. Okay, so you're anti-circle. Yeah, more DMs. Uh, I'm more of an isosceles triangle kind of guy in geometry, but I like a good rectangle card. Mm. I'm not a big oval card. Yeah. No. All right. Well. The uh, last sale of the 2009 Flare Ultra EX Crosby Jambalaya PSA 10 was 780 US in September on September 1st of this year. All time high 1375 US from June of 2022. Got a current bid, Louis. Get in there while you can. It's sitting at $105 US. Oh, Josh, oh, it's wow. calling you. It's calling you, Joshy. It is. Oh. Are you going to bet on it? Bet or bid? Bid. <laughs> Maybe. I don't yeah, know. you should. Find I like a it, raw but one. I have you other priorities. A, you could get a raw one cheaper. And this one is okay. perfect, though. Like I looked at the back and the centering is so nice. So, so this one. Some of them I, bad. I, I never look at them. Are some of them bad? I don't know. Well, the whole PSA ten centering thing is like can be ninety ten, mm-hmm. and I prefer PSA tens that are not ninety ten. More like. No, no, no. I mean, it can be 60 40. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, say, I'm saying the, the like, you've seen your fair share of jambalaya raws. Do do they differ greatly in, in sure. centering? Yeah. Okay. Edges and centering. Yeah. Okay. And then on the back, and this one has really nice back centering too. So the back centering can actually be 90 10, but it looks very um, perfecty on okay. both sides. Nice. Baba Louie, what's your favorite modern card this week in the Fanatics Collect Weekly Auction? The 2019 Upper Deck Kale McCarr Upper Deck Exclusives. Yeah. Out of 100. Beauty. Strap in, boys. It, it, it's a monster card alert. Heck yeah. This is a big it. deal. I love this. Oh, this yeah. is a great card. You know, great this card. is a, if you can shell it out, this is a, I mean, and it's not that expensive, but for me, yeah. yeah. But oh, whoa. Oh, this is God. a great this if you're a macar dude this has got to be in your pc has to be um card itself can't say much it's a 10 but yeah. there are 33 total psa graded copies of this card mm-hmm. 13 of them are 10s Ooh. yep now phil mm. last sale a year ago take a guess Mm, a year ago, last sale of an exclusive Macar. I say yes, 14,000. 14, okay, well, let's go with uh, 3,500. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently there's not many big Macar spenders out there. <laughs> well, here's the deal, though. Only four PSA 10 sales since 2020. I, I thought it would be high like that because of the PSA 10. I thought that'd be You thought price. that an OV jersey number high gloss was. 20 grand and that uh it was 50 car exclusives is 14,000. I haven't even <laughs> showered after work yet, so I'm not, I'm not making much sense. <laughs> uh, I, what I really appreciate about this card really quick is that it looks super nice. Like sometimes yeah, like the exclusives or high gloss is the design that 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 part of the design doesn't pop as much, but there's a yeah. whole color match and 
I really love the Young Guns branding or badging for this year, so I'm a big fan of this card. Yeah, I so, and if you were to go on Fanatics Collect auction, you can see there is a regular Young Gun PSA 10 Makar, and the coloring on this exclusive, man, that makes it pop. But if you're wondering, um, current bid for this guy right now is 1025 US dollars. But if you just want a PSA 10 Makar Young Guns, right now that bid's at $88. Ooh. Yeah, I think those go for like 400 something like that, typically. Where this, like you said, is probably a $2,500 to $3,500 card. Mm-hmm. Or 14 grand. Or, f- or 14 grand if it's Phil. Depending if now, you showered or not. Yeah. If, if the seller was listening, he just pooped his pants when he said yeah. 14 grand. He got I really only buy expensive it. cards when I'm clean. I'm when I'm stinky, I don't. <laughs> oh, heck. All right, Phil, you got the last modern card. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Beauty. Oh, what a card, guys. Okay. You're looking at or listening at a 2015 OPG Platinum White Ice Miko Rantanen PSA 9. So mm-hmm. this is a weird option for me to pick because I'm not a big Rantanen guy anyways. Uh, I always get him and Landis Cog mixed up for some reason, the multiple syllables. and um, Yeah, so the reason I picked this card is for how awesome the design is. And I want to showcase that the first year of stature was good, but it wasn't great. The first year <laughs> of credentials was good, but it wasn't great. The first year of OPG Platinum, to me, is top three of all time. It is so nice. I love the designs. The second year of OPG Platinum probably is my favorite, which is uh, McDavid's year. But this is a beautiful card. I just feel the early OPG Platinum designs show you you can achieve a great looking card with a more traditional style formatting. This is a very like banner type of card. And I I love that. I love the sepias. I love the beiges. I love the browns. I don't know if it reminds me of my grandparents' basement or something. Placement of the logo, the Avalanche logo, dead center right at the bottom. His name is extremely legible. Looks like a, a rocker. Well, it looks like a nice banner name. The color Just of every- your grandparents' carpet or their Davenport? No. I- Davenport. <laughs> is that a word in Canada? Davenport? I, I, sh- I feel like I should know that. Uh, wait, what is that? Davenport? Back, back in the day, that was the name for couch. They call it uh, Davenport. Oh, okay. What about Chesterfield? Is that a couch for you guys? No, Chesterfield? Uh, sounds like a dresser. I think a Chester. Oh, yeah, maybe a Chesterfield isn't it? <laughs> the, the other one was the oh, Barca Lounger. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what about Bean- remember the Barca Lounger, Louis? <laughs> no, I don't know what that I is. Do. What about beanbag chairs? Beanbag chairs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Josh, yeah, yeah. Josh has one of those massive ones downstairs. Oh, cool. Yeah, I want to get yeah. one for Hasselhoff because he's getting too big on the couch. Okay, anyways, back to the card. <laughs> so I know this. <laughs> I, I, it has a very vintagey feel, and I love it. You look at any Crosby, any OPG Platinum Crosby card, it, it, it all kind of has that same feel, and I feel like they've deviated away from that after 2018, 2019, um, and ever since kind of the more poor year. I'm not trying to pick on that year, but the, I believe it was 22, 20, 21, 22 was pretty rough, and I just don't feel like they've bounced back to that. So if anybody's listening at Upper Deck, I think history is great. Let's Let's maybe circle back to what worked really beautifully well. Maybe my opinion is not common. I don't know. Uh, but this current bid, the, this card is for $15 current bid. Uh, and his autograph, I think the first year OPG Platinum, the autos were a little weak. Um, almost mm-hmm. like with the same on um, the stature. I think. I, I'm, I'm not positive. Well, this is the second bad. year one. I thought this was 2014 15. It's 2015. He's Miko Rannon is the same rookie year as McDavid. Oh, he is okay. My fault. So yeah, this this is then this is McDavid's year. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Even more nicer. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> they're both and they're both so, really nice sets, in my opinion. They're, they're very very. I I actually I really did think this was the first year. They're they're very similar. All right, you can bid on any of these six cards or all the other cool, interesting, and exciting hockey cards available this week at fanaticscollect.com. Personal pickups, Louis. You got some pickups to share. I do. Let's jump nice. into these. First one, 2014-15, Black Diamond. Brian Bellows, auto, out of 10. Now, I did kind of break a little bit of my cardinal rule, but I like the card enough. It was out of 10 to buy it as a sticker auto. Uh, Beautiful card. Kind of cool design. I I love sort of a futuristic design meets retro. 
kind of thing. Don't you think uh, Bellows kind of nice looks like, too. Don't you think Brian Bellows looks like a certain somebody that's playing in the NHL now? Cole Caulfield? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? What do you think? Yeah, I think so a little bit. Got the he had to holds. be bigger than Caulfield though, right? No, Brian Bellows is pretty small, I think. You should know. I know, I forget. Uh, I'm looking it up. Don't worry, don't worry. No, don't I think Brian Bellows is pretty tiny, man. Oh, yeah. Well, 5'11". That's, well, I'm 5'10 on the internet. <laughs> 5'10". I'm a big 5'9". All right, what else do you get, Louis? Um, missing member of the family, Matt Zuccarello. Ooh. It's a 22, nice 23, exquisite. Patch auto out of 65. Thought the patch was six. It's a nice three color patch. Yeah. Hey, card. Holy crap. I couldn't believe it when I got it though. Um, really? Yeah, I I I that's probably the thickest card I have. It doesn't even we didn't have anything at the chateau to even fit it to put it in a new one. It's a one eighty, no? Uh, it's bigger than that. Really? You like them thick, eh? Sure. Cards. It's rumor, yeah. anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so yeah, sick card, of course. It's just a wild auto, that's why I picked it up. And the final one, thanks to our buddy California Dave. Nice. I was able to finally get my hands on the 2018-19 Splendor Splendid Signatures Madonna Auto out of 24. Splendid Splendor. Mike's Splendor. got flow in this one, huh? Oh yeah, rookie flow. Mike's one of the coolest guys ever. He uh, man, that guy, if I could die and come back as somebody, it'd be him. <laughs> Got some pretty I like this card though. It's a very, very beautiful auto and mm-hmm. a nice card. And I'm not Bill. a huge. Hold on one second. I'm not a huge memorabilia guy, but you know, jerseys are cool. I would love that set of Easton gloves. Oh yeah, those, those are, are cool. sweet. Those would look cool on a wall. Um, Bill, yes. Oh, so, are you done, Louis? Or do, I thought... no, I'm not done. But you're going to go next because I put Phil last. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going next. Okay, so I got a little bit of a different personal pickup. Thanks to our Gong Show Discord, Cigar Scott. I mentioned last week that I'm a huge Vancouver millionaire stan, and I wanted to get some merch, <laughs> and he found it for me. And so sure. it was an instant order of, yeah, I'll be repping my, forget the wild. It's my new favorite team. <laughs> right? Stanley Cup champion, Vancouver millionaires, may I remind you? And they can't disappoint me at this stage. So <laughs> I think it's a perfect team to root for. I can't wait to get my hoodie and rock. I don't know. It's kind of I'm cool with you, Nordic. Josh. I'm a Nordique fan now, officially. Forget the sense. It's over. All right. Well, mm-hmm. well, is there a surprise from Phil? I'm not sure be scared. What's going on? Do you have any more pickups? No. That's no. no. Uh, no, I just, I don't have any pickups. I just wanted to say Friday nights with Phil. I'll show all my pickups. Oh, there you go. I, I do want to see with the. Oh, that yeah. Great. That was kind of cool, wasn't it? I do want to say one thing. I am a okay. little, uh, I do have a little bit of anxiety from the very beginning of our episode when we were talking about our poppies. I, I would, I, I think it's very important that um, the, you, in February? you guys, you guys need to know. No, it's in November. Uh, you guys need to know that the biggest thing I, I didn't say and I omitted because I had a main bra- big brain fart was the poppies is from a poem called In Flanders Field, F- Fields. Okay. And it's from a, an author called John McRae. And right. uh, I don't know the poem off by heart, but that's where that's the origin of it. So I just I feel that's very important that I need to say that. Uh, well, good. that is a good uh, addition. And it is kind of fun to watch you squirm in situations like that, because you're normally a very confident guy in what you say. And then the yeah. minute you get a little bit inconfident, you kind of fall apart, which is yeah, a lot of part <laughs> as a good friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's our role to make fun of you for that. So yeah, for sure. but it is a very it's not a light topic of course it's very yeah. serious and uh somber and it's something like i said i really really think it's cool like i wish we did something like that here in the u.s it's, it's and next next time november when i'm in canada i think louis we should rock poppies how do you feel about that i'll rock a poppy let's uh, do it everybody should everybody should yeah. because yeah yeah I, i'm big i i feel like i dropped the ball not i won't even talk about that more next year so okay right. and That's before good. you move on josh producer louis had a mishap while you were discussing uh, our great sponsor, Slab Sharks, earlier, yeah. you were talking, but I never got to show. I never put it up. All the work I put into showing everybody the awesome cards in this Slab Sharks auction. Oh, this wow. Week. This was supposed to be going on while you were talking. 
and I completely forgot. I ran it in the background. Look at it. There's all these bangers. And this is where you can find them. Right here. Slab Sharks. (laughs) Well, it does does look like it was a lot of work. (laughs) I'm glad you... That's awesome, Louie. Must have been pretty bitter inside when you totally, you know, fumbled the the ball uh, there. But I was hey, like, man. Yeah, sorry, boys. It happens. It's all good. Hey, Louis, you're doing a bang up job, of course. And our shows never look better, so don't feel bad at all. Well, if you like the episode, please leave a rating review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, you want to chat with us on the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider five dollar donation. Join out of two ninety nine support level tier on patreon link is in the show description and both our podcast apps and youtube instagram tiktok profile you can go to our website hockeycardsgongshow.com click on the become a patron link or go to patreon directly p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com and search for hockey cards gong show we're on social media yeah we're cool we're hip we're young uh, follow us on instagram facebook tiktok twitter and youtube and boys the hockey cards gong show podcast is a production of dollar box ventures llc uh, amazing job love you phil love you baba louie can't wait to be back with you again in a couple days. Have an awesome weekend. Stay safe if it's wintry. And Louie, take us out, buddy. Bye.